Editing long talking to camera sections of a video is time consuming and labor intensive. However, there is a new-ish feature in DaVinci Resolve that may help speed up this process. It's the ability to generate transcripts from clips, from media, and then to edit using that Word document. I wanna show you how to set it up, how to actually edit using the transcript, and talk a little bit about the benefits and some of the disadvantages of editing this way. You will need DaVinci Resolve Studio. It is part of the machine learning AI feature set in Resolve Studio, and as far as I know, it's not available in the free version. Okay, so let's take a look at Resolve. Let's open it up first. I've got two clips here and two audio tracks. I have the audio recorded separately, so I'm gonna go ahead and sync that. So when I start adding the clips from the transcription, it's gonna throw them onto the timeline and I want to have the synced audio already with the clip. So I'm just gonna right click and auto sync based on waveform. To generate the transcription, it's super simple. You just click on the clip that you want to transcribe and come up here to the top left, transcribe audio. This process is going to take some time depending on the length of the clip, obviously, and how fast your computer is. It opens up the transcription in this window that you can obviously grab and move around. You can resize it works pretty much just like any kind of window <laughs> and a text document. You can increase or decrease the font. You can change the background from black to white. You can generate subclips, but I'm not gonna get into that. I just wanna talk about how you can edit directly from this. And all you need to do to edit is actually just highlight bits of text, come down to the bottom right, and you have two options for putting it onto your timeline. The first one being insert, which is just going to insert it wherever your playhead is. The second one is append, which is gonna put it on the end of the timeline. I'm going to close this for a second, just hit that X, and then I'm going to generate a transcription for the other clip. Another way to do it, aside from just hitting this icon on the top left, is to right click, come down to audio transcription, and hit transcribe. So here is the second transcript. And you'll notice obviously that I closed out of the first one, and in order to get them back, all you have to do is just hit the transcribe button again, and it'll just pull it up. It's obviously not gonna retranscribe it, but it will save it and just pull it up for future use. If you need to clear the transcription, right click on it, come down to audio transcription, clear to transcribe. What if you have multiple clips and you wanna do them all at once and then go grab a coffee, some breakfast, or do something else with your life while you're waiting? You can highlight them both and hit transcribe and it will batch transcribe them. You do it that way, it pulls up one transcription and gives you a thumbnail at the top so that you can swap between them. Pretty dang cool. <laughs> Another feature up at the top right, the three dots, you have the option to remove silent portions. So all these ellipses that are in the transcription represent portions where you're not saying anything or the, it's not detecting anything essentially. And if you hit that, it's going to line through all those sections and if you were to put this onto your timeline just looking at the waveform there are some significant stretches of silent portions you can try it for yourself maybe you'll have better results than i just did but it's not the most useful thing about this whole process in my opinion anyway now we know how to generate the transcriptions how do we actually use these to edit so I can see, obviously, this very beginning part is me just talking to myself, trying to get everything set up, and I can find the beginning of where I'm actually trying to deliver the content. <laughs> I know I'm a week late to the party, but I wanted to talk about firmware, blah, 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 and I'll skim through to the end of that sentence, highlight it, and I will hit insert. And as you can see, it drops it onto the timeline. You can also just click on the text and hit spacebar. I know I'm a week late to the party, but I wanted to talk about and listen back to it. So that can be pretty helpful and we'll get into that a little bit more. I know I struggle to get the next idea out. I say, I don't wanna look a gift horse in the mouth. I don't wanna look a gift horse in the mouth. I say it three or four times before I finally get it right. So I can skim through and find the last one. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, whatever that means. It's always good when companies support products that have been out for years by adding new features. So that's a good thing. 
In this way, you can also easily identify repetitive ideas or repetitive sentence structures, especially if you're like me and you don't tightly script your videos, you just have talking points, reading from notes, etc. I oftentimes just sort of ramble. So I say, it's always good when companies, and then I end by saying, so that's a good thing. So what I can do is just edit out, so that's a good thing, and go to the beginning of the sentence and just append it. The next section, what's weird though, what's weird, what's weird, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. what's weird, another one where it's taking me a while <laughs> to get it right. All right, so this last one, I finally finished the sentence, but just like that f previous example, I begin by saying what's weird or potentially off-putting, et cetera, et cetera, and then I finish the thought by saying that's weird. Again, it's redundant to start off by saying it's weird and then end with that's weird. So I can eliminate the end of that. Sometimes it wants to grab extra words, so it's a little buggy, it's not perfect and then append that to the end. Okay, moving on. And I also don't want to be an idiot. Um, how long does it take, anybody out there who does software development, how long does it take to, to write this code and to implement it, to test it, to refine it, et cetera? Because I would imagine you know, that's not a process that can take just days, but it's really taking months. Okay, so there's a lot there that probably can be edited out. So I say, and I also don't want to be an idiot. How long does it take? Anybody out there who does software development, how long does it take? So maybe let's say, I don't want to be an idiot. I'm gonna add that and then I'll say, I'll skip anybody out there. Oh, let me listen from here real quick. Anybody out there who does software development, how long does it take to, to write this code and to implement it, to test it, to refine it, etc.? Okay, and I'll just end at refine it. So that is pretty much the process. It really helps if you have recently recorded this and you're not coming back to it weeks later, it'll be fresh in your mind. You, you might have some recall about how long or how many times you did certain sections. And once you start reading it, you'll be like, oh yeah, um, I can probably skip, start skimming through and find the last one that I did. Okay, maybe down here I have a section. We can just listen to it for a second. Just random like segmentation, just seems like arbitrary segmentation. And then shutter angle. So I said just random like segmentation just seems like arbitrary segmentation. So maybe I can just go just seems like arbitrary segmentation. So hopefully you get the idea. You can see maybe the benefit of working in this way. So let's look at the timeline and see how it did actually making all those cuts. So I'm going to close this down. As you can see at the beginning, it left. I know I'm a week late all that for some reason, even though we highlighted. I know I'm a week late, to, so for some reason it con it's considered all of that stuff at the beginning to be part of that for some reason. So it's not perfect. So you do have to come through and massage the edit points a little bit, a lot of it, depending on your perspective, I guess. So what you'll have to do is just cut off the beginning of that it also tends to cut off the ends of words at cut points and cut into the next word sometimes at those cut points. So let's listen here. It's for cameras. I don't want to look a gift. Okay, so I'm going to ripple delete the end of that one and then zoom in a little bit here. Now to, to fix this cut point here where it's cutting into the word cameras. cameras. I don't want to. You can use the trim edit mode which is just this next icon after the selection tool or the selection mode or the keyboard shortcut T. And to use this, just hover your cursor at the edge of the edit point. So I want to drag this out to reveal the rest of the word cameras. I'm just going to click and drag. And instead of writing over the next clip or extending and deleting it, it just moves everything to the right. So to do the trim edit mode on the opposite side, you just hover over and drag to the left and it pushes everything over to the right. I don't want to look again. Okay, so I'm gonna arrow down to the next cut point. Gears by adding new features. So we, I, I, okay, new features. Gonna cut that. I, 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 features. I, I, I would, but what's weird or potentially off? Okay, I don't know why I included all of that. So just ripple delete that section, come to the next cut Smith of the firmware. And I also don't want to be announcement of the firmware. Okay, so we're going to extend out this cut point. 
just so I finish the word of the firmware. And I also don't want to be an idiot. And same thing here. And I also don't want to be an idiot. Anybody out there? Okay. If you don't know how to do ripple deletes, I have a video on my channel showing you what a ripple delete is, how to do it in Resolve, how to set up keyboard shortcuts if you don't like the defaults for the ripple delete. So go check out that video, super helpful. If it seems cumbersome to have to go through and massage those cut points, it potentially is. But if you are doing this old fashioned way and just listening through, uh, watching and listening, I often will make pretty rough cuts as I'm just cutting out silent portions. So I'm gonna have to go back through and fix those edits to tighten them up. So this is kind of the same thing. These cut points are not gonna be perfect. You do have to tighten them up a little bit. So this is, this whole process is a rough edit. If you do multicam edits or multicam shoots, you can use the transcription feature with multicam and I'll show you how to set that up real quick too. So I got these two clips that I want to sync into a multicam clip, even though they're not the same frame rate. My bad. I'm going to right click and create new multicam. Just gonna name this whatever angle sync is gonna be sound and create. So I have my multicam clip here named main one and I'm going to transcribe the audio. You can work through this in the same process. I'm just going to, I'm not going to spend time reading through this. I'm just going to highlight bits of text and just start throwing them down onto the timeline. Okay. And now I'm going to close this down. Once you have those edits onto the timeline, then you can just treat this like any other multicam edit. If you need to go in and adjust anything with the multicam, you can right click on the clip open in timeline. You can delete audio that you don't need. You can reorder the camera clips, put one on top of the other, et cetera. So it works exactly the same way. Come back out to that timeline. You can open up the multicam editor and start flipping through your angles just like you would any other time you multicam edit. I hope that was clear and relatively easy to follow. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And I also love to know if you find this type of editing to be helpful or better than doing it the regular way, I suppose. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.